to the Lamb of God. That's it. We welcome you in this place this morning, in the place where I believe that God lives, dwells, breathes. Hallelujah. And we bless the Lord. We bless him. We bless him. Come on, just give him your best praise. Come on, give him your best praise. Give him your best praise. Hallelujah. Give him your best praise. Father, we lift up your name. We lift up your name. We lift up your name. Your name be lifted in this place today, Yahweh. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for you are full of mercy. We thank you that you are full of grace. We thank you, oh God, that you are our healer. You are our deliverer. And we bless you in this place today. We decree and declare that you are holy. You are holy, you are righteous, and you are wonderful. Hallelujah unto the Lamb of God. Hallelujah unto the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We lift up praise in this place. We lift up praise in this place. We lift up praise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on from the city of your souls. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. David said, bless the Lord, all of my soul and everything within me. Bless his holy name. For the Lord, he is good and he is worthy to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and open your mouth and bless him. Come on. We want to fill the house with praise. 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 Hallelujah. God, we bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We lift you in this place today. We declare that you are God. And besides you, there is no other God. And we bless your holy name. 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 Oh God, you are worthy. Oh God, you are worthy. Oh God, you are worthy. Let the heavens hear our praise today. Let the heavens hear our praise today. You are worthy. We lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We declare that you are good and you are God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. There's no time limit on it. We're just blessing him. We're just filling the house with praise. We're just filling the house with praise. We're filling the house with praise. For when the praises go up, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, look at somebody and tell him, let us do this together. Let us do this together. Come on, look at somebody and tell him, let us do this together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy of our praise. 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 And we bless him this morning. We love him. We thank him. God, we thank you. We lift you. We glorify you. We enter into your presence today with thanksgiving. We come before you with singing and with gladness. And we come before you with our hearts lifted, thanking you and praising you for every everything that you have done and praising you for everything that you're going to do hallelujah in this place today we glorify him we magnify him for he is good and he is god and he is worthy to be praised clap your hands in this place and bless him hallelujah 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 unto the lamb of god Hallelujah unto the Lamb of God. Hallelujah unto the Lamb of God. 
we worship you, Father. We give you glory. We give you honor. Come on, I just feel the spirit of praise and the spirit of worship in this place. Sometimes you got to shake off all of the residue of your day, the residue of your life, and you have to concentrate on him. You have to understand that he is just simply worthy. If you think about yourself, you're not worshiping God. But if you think about him, songwriters, songwriters said years ago, they penned a song, when I think of the goodness of the Lord and the goodness of God and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Clap your hands one more time and bless him this morning. Come on, just begin to worship him, bless him. We're getting ready to prepare ourselves as we open up. We welcome you into the house of God. We welcome you to Impact Church Goldsboro. Hallelujah. Where we believe that God is building a people to impact cities, nations. And I decree and declare that even today that the Lord is going to do something mighty in your life. Listen, take a moment and greet someone. I firmly believe that literally it's impossible to get in the lap of God and to get intimate with God while we ignore one another. So give someone a sincere good morning, a, a sincere hello, and just basically greet your brother and your sister for how can we say we love God and we do not love the brothers and sisters that we see every day. And so we honor him this morning. We praise him. We love him. We lift him. We thank him. We magnify him. We glorify him in this place. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our praise. We bless you, Father. We thank you. This morning, Father, we ask that you would have your way in this place. We decree and declare that your glory reigns in this house, that your presence is here, that your power is here. We decree and declare this morning that Literally, Father, your power is here to heal, to deliver, and to set free. We thank you this morning that no weapon formed against your people nor this particular service will be able to prosper. We thank you that the word of God will come forth with power and the anointing of God will break and destroy every yoke. We thank you that you're permeating even the atmosphere of even the broadcast today, that even those who watch and who are even in the presence of the service through the video and the broadcast, uh, we ask that you would heal and deliver in bedrooms or kitchen tables and Father we thank you to go into the living rooms and let your anointing Father permeate the homes and the hearts of the people of God and we prophesy today that you will heal and you will deliver and we thank you for it in the mighty name of Jesus uh, can I get a few sanctified full of the Holy Ghost people to clap your hands and bless the Lord Bless the Lord, all of my soul. We're so honored this morning. We're thankful. Every first Sunday, we generally take our communion, our Holy Communion. Last Sunday, we, we did not partake in Holy Communion. So this Sunday, we wanted to basically continue what we believe is a very, very sacred, if you will, uh, moment and experience in the lives of the believers and the church. And so we ask that you would grab your Bibles as we prepare to share and, and receive the Lord's table. And as we receive the communion, we ask that you would just open your heart hearts and your minds as we prepare to even receive we will share in scripture bless the sacraments and we will partake of the Lord's body and of the Lord's blood the Lord is good. I mean, we had an amazing conference this weekend uh, with, with, with Coach Catherine, Apostle Catherine, and literally uh, we just were, we, I mean, we went through a whole deliverance. It was like, man, God blessed us. Even on yesterday, uh, we were just still talking about the residue of what took place Thursday and Friday. And so if you're like me, I'm still caught up and I'm still just really full from everything that we received, even in the Fathered Conference. And we're truly thankful. Listen, we want to call your attention to this morning the book of Matthew I, I want to just lift this particular verse of scripture up Matthew chapter 26 Matthew chapter 26 Matthew chapter 26 we're going to read a few select verses of scripture this morning in your hearing we're going to pray and bless these sacraments and we're going to partake of the Lord's table and we're going to basically receive his body and his blood and we're going to basically receive everything that we even learned this week that there's so much more to the to the redemption of Jesus uh, as he redeemed us he redeemed us from the curse of the law he redeemed us from sin 
He redeemed us from so many things, but we literally went through uh, so many other things that he redeemed us from poverty, sickness. And so today as we partake, we're going to partake afresh of everything that his blood purchased for us, and we're excited about that. If you have your Bibles at Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26. We're going to begin reading at verse number 26 down through verse number 30. And the Bible reads in Matthew 26 and 26, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and he blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, and they went out into the Mount of Olives. We praise God for that. I wanted to read that particular scripture. If you would very kindly go with me over to a more common scripture that we use in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I wanted to read that because as Jesus basically uh, took and he drank with his uh, disciples of the cup. And literally he said his blood was shed for the remission of sins. And I believe that even today the blood of Jesus is covering and removing sin but I also believe that he's healing and delivering and he is even setting us free and he's bringing us into and I love it he says uh, that when I drink it again with you it'll be in my father's kingdom and whether you know it or not the revelation is that the kingdom of heaven is here come on here some people think you got to get to heaven in, to experience the kingdom but the kingdom is here and so I'm grateful for that I'm grateful for that first Corinthians 11 and 23 says for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me and after the same manner also he took the cup and when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Praise God for the reading of the word of the Lord. Come on and clap your hands and bless him this morning. Bless him this morning. That's it. Bless him this morning. Bless him this morning. That's it. Don't be afraid to clap those hands and bless him for he is good. For he is good. Father, we thank you for these sacraments. We thank you for the bread that symbolizes the body of Jesus Christ that was beaten, bruised, and torn for our sins and our iniquities. We thank you that even he, he bore the stripes upon his body that we might be healed. As the prophet says in Isaiah, that by his stripes we are healed. And we decree and declare today, Father, that this bread, symbolic of the body of Jesus, that as we partake we partake afresh of that healing and that deliverance we take and partake afresh of everything that he purchased for us through the redemption of the body and blood of Jesus Christ we thank you for the blood that symbolized in this cup this juice symbolizing the blood of Jesus as we partake even in the scriptures it says that life is in the blood and as we partake today father we partake of the life of Jesus we partake of the life that Jesus purchased for us and we thank you for this cup. We sanctify it. We bless it that as we partake today, we partake afresh of everything that you have done for us and that you are yet doing in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. We praise our God. Thank God for the cup of the Lord. Thank God for the cup of the Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask, as Elder Jones assists us, we're going to ask that, that you would be led out, and if you would come and receive, amen, these sacraments, and as you receive, we ask that you would hold on to them until, until everyone has received. So I'm going to ask if Brother Mike would lead you out, and Brother Tim is leading them out on the left side, and as you come, please, uh, those of you, the scripture says, that literally understand that Jesus died for you, and that he was raised from the dead, 
those of you who understand that he has purchased your salvation and you have given your life to him you are I'm, I'm telling you you are literally uh, worthy of the of, of the Lord's table the cup of the Lord and we do this in remembrance of him and he says to us that as we partake as we partake we partake afresh of what he did for us on Calvary and so right now everything that we've been redeemed from we believe that it is manifesting in our lives we've been redeemed from poverty we heard that this weekend didn't we we've been redeemed from sickness and infirmities and diseases and all generational curses are broken and we receive it today if we be your ministers today may we serve you the Lord's body may we serve you the Lord's body we ask that you open them carefully for those of you who are at home and you desire to partake we ask that you get you some juice get you some bread sanctified with prayer this bread is symbolic of the body of Jesus Christ the scripture says that he break it and today we break it symbolizing how he was beaten, bruised, torn for our sins. Take ye, eat all of it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The cup that symbolizes the blood of Jesus that ran down Calvary's hill. Scripture says that life is in the blood. The Bible says that when the blood of Jesus ran down Golgotha's hill, that literally there were those who were in the grave who had been buried that they got up from the grave symbolizing the life that Jesus brought to the earth. Take ye, drink all of it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now come on and give the Lord some praise. Come on, 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 give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. For the Lord, he is good. For the Lord, he is kind. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Rebaba. Thank you, Father. We love you. We honor you, we adore you, we magnify you, we glorify you, we lift you in this place. And we declare today that you are God. That's it. Praise him. Come on, we got to lift the praise in this place. Come on. We got to lift the praise in this place. Hear my mind. Come on, this is the house of the Lord. It's the house of prayer. It's the house of praise. Glory to God. It's the house of prayer. It's the house of praise. And we lift up your name today, oh God. We declare in this place today that you are God. And besides you, there is no other God. There is no other God. There is no other God. Woo, glory to God. Ribababa, shokata. Come on, there is no other God. 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 Come on, we're going to hear the voice of the people just for a moment. Come on, let's just come take on, the music on. down and lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, let the hallelujah come out of your mouth. Come on, let the hallelujah come out of your mouth. Come on, let the hallelujah come out of your mouth. Come on, let the hallelujah come out of your mouth. Let the tongue of praise be loose in the people of God. And Father, we bless you. We praise you. We decree and declare that the porters of praise are open today. Hallelujah. The earth declares your glory today. We bless you today in this place. Hallelujah. Come on. That's it. Come on. We're working in the spirit. Something is happening in the spirit. We break every spirit of, of hindrance right now in the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare that nothing shall hinder our praise. We decree and declare that God, our minds will focus on you. We bind idle mindedness where our minds are all over the place 
and we center our heart and our mind on you. Come on. You came to worship God this morning. You came to give him praise. You came to lift him up. That's it. Come on. You came to give him praise. You came to lift him up. Come on. That's it. You got to get a praise out of your belly. God doesn't want a lazy praise. He doesn't want a praise that's apathetic, but he wants a sincere praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. A joyful praise. A joyful praise. A joyful praise. A joyful praise. Come on, demons hover around low energy and we cast out devils in the name of Jesus and we decree and declare that God, we lift up your praise. We lift up your name and as we lift up your praise, as we lift up your name, Father, you're lifting us, you're lifting us, you're lifting us. You're lifting the spirits of the people of God out of depression. You're lifting them out of oppression. You're lifting them, oh God. You're lifting them out of a spirit of of even worryation and fear and today we decree and declare the glory of the Lord the glory of the Lord the glory of the Lord come on let the glory of the Lord rise in this place let the glory of the Lord rise in this place Come on, we came into the house of God and God's house is a house of praise, a house of worship. It's a house of prayer. Glory to God. It's where we come to lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Yahweh. Lift up the name of Jesus our God. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Let our mouths be filled with praise. Let our hearts be filled with praise. And bless us. Bless us. Hey, my, my soul. Bless us. Let the glory of God come in. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We adore you. We magnify you. We adore you. We magnify you. We lift you in this place. We decree and declare that you are God. And we love you. We praise you. We love you. We praise you. We love you, we praise you. We love you and we praise you. Come on, we serve a worthy God. We serve a worthy God. He's worthy of praise. He deserves our worship. He deserves our worship. Hallelujah. If God was a shopper, if he was one who basically shopped in today's, uh, if you will, society, he doesn't do discount stores. Come on, God, don't do discount. He told Israel, don't bring me nothing on discount. Don't bring me nothing that is lame. Don't bring me nothing that is bruised. Don't bring me nothing if it's not perfect, if it's not the first choice, perfect lamb and sacrifice. You keep it. Hallelujah. He said you wouldn't give the governor that. He said, so bring me the best praise. Come on, somebody say, God, I give you my best praise. Woo. Your body might be tired but your spirit is willing to praise God. Come on, somebody said, if I couldn't do nothing but wave my hand, but if I could get a hallelujah out, I'd get the best hallelujah I could get out. Woo! Because the Lord has been good. Come on, prophesy. The Lord is good. That's prophetic. He is good. He has been and he is good. And I bless him this morning. His house deserves praise. His house deserves worship. And we love him. Lift your hands and give him glory right now. Father, let your glory come in the room. We thank you. 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 We, thank you. we, thank you. we, thank you. we magnify you. We glorify you. We lift you. We lift you in this place, oh God. We lift you. We glorify you in this place. 
That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it. That's it, that's it. Just begin to worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I decree and declare that at Impact Church Goldsboro, we will not allow a praise to be lower than it should be in the presence of God. We don't come to stand and look. We don't come to watch. We come to praise and worship. We come to lift our voices. We are praisers. We are worshipers. We are warriors in the spirit. We are intercessors. We are those who are able to open the heavens. We are those who are able to open the heavens and bring the glory of God in. Bring the glory of God in. Let the glory of God come 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 in. Father, let your glory come in. Let your Shekinah glory come in. Come on, come on, come on. We come to get healed and delivered. We come to get healed and delivered. We come to be set free even the more. Let the glory of God come in. 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 Come on, you praise him. You worship him. You praise him. You worship him. Come on, let the glory of God come in. Let the glory of God come in. Father, we glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you in this place. We lift you in this place. Come on, with your hands lifted, your hearts open. You are the one who is supposed to praise and worship God. We praise and worship him together. We praise and worship him together. Come on, that's it. Lift your hands and worship him. Yeah, my, my soul. Let the glory in. Lift your hands and worship. Glory Lift your hands and worship. Glory Come on, Lift your hands and worship. Stay right there. Stay right there. Let the glory in. Let the glory in. Come on, let the glory in. Let it in. Let the glory 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 in. Glory. That's it. Worship him. That's it. That's it. That's it. Let the glory in. Let the glory in. Oh, by shake Let the glory in. Let the glory in, let your healing in, let your grace in, let your mercy in, let your Shekinah glory in, let it in, let it in, let it in, Father we thank you, we thank you for your presence. worship that you have hollowed out for us. We thank you that this is where your church gathers, your bride gathers. And we thank you, Father, for this place, this house of worship where we feel your presence, where we feel your glory this morning. And Father, we just come to you as humble as we know how. 
asking that you would have mercy on us this morning. That you would have mercy on us, that you would forgive us of our sins, oh God. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you that we are the redeemed of the Lord, that we have been justified and we've been made righteous because of the blood of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for this time where we will hear a word from you. And Father, I decree and I declare that the ears of your people have been circumcised and that we will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us on this morning. Father, your word will come forth with clarity. Your word will come forth with power, demonstration, and might. And I thank you, Father, that there will be fruit. There will be fruit from the seed of this word in the lives of your people, that fruit be miracle signs and, and wonders and victories and breakthroughs now, healings and deliverances now in the name of Jesus because of the preached word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the preached word and we the taught word, the prophetic word that is coming forth. God, I decree and declare that your word is coming. The word is coming. The word is coming. The word, the word, the word, the word. Jesus is coming into our situation. Jesus is coming. He's in the room. 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 Breakthrough is in the room. Healing is in the room. Glory is in the room. Our Savior, our Deliverer is here, God, and we thank you for your word, Father. It's in Jesus' name we come with expectation because we are expecting you, God. We celebrate we praise your wonderful name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on all over the building, begin to bless God. Come on all over the building, begin to bless God. I don't know about you, but I need God. I need him. God knows I need him. I need the Lord. I need him. I need him. I am dependent upon him. I am relying on him. I stand in his strength this morning. I stand in his power this morning. I stand in his love this morning. God knows I need him. I need him. I need him. Look over at somebody and tell him I need him. I need him. I need him. I need the Lord. I need him. I need him this morning. I need him. I need him. I need him. And not only do I need him, but I want him. I want him. Hey, so he's not just a need, but he's a desire. My soul longs after thee. You alone, oh Lord, are my heart's desire. And I long to worship you. I long to be in your presence. I long to feel your love embrace. I love you. I love you. I love you. I need you. I need you. Not only do I need you, but I want you. I desire you. I crave you. I crave your presence. I crave you. Show us your glory. Show us your might. Show us your goodness. Woo! Feel Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you in this place. We love you in this place. We thank you in this place. Hallelujah. 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 If you're seeking worshipers, God, let your search in with me. Let your search in with me. Seeking worshipers, those who will worship you in spirit and in truth, let your search in with me. <laughs> May you say, I found what I was looking for found a worshiper. Father, we love you in this place. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. My soul doth magnify him. I don't know about you, but there's just such a strong <clears throat> resonation in my spirit of
how I how much I need God. How much I need him. The word of the Lord says, look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So we love him on this morning. And we bless him on this morning. We love, we love what we feel in this place. Amen. We thank God for the people of God. We thank God for Impact Church Goldsboro. We thank God for Impact Church Global. Those of you who are with us here in person and those of you who are with us uh, virtually, we praise God for our um, angel of this house, uh, Apostle Vaughn, our senior pastor. Can you stand to your feet all over this place and begin to give him, amen, the worthy honor that he is due. We thank God for you. Come on, that's a lazy praise. Come on, raise it just a little higher. Hallelujah. Thank God for the man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's just something about him. I know the Holy Ghost is always at work in me when I minister, but it's just something I believe I just preach a little bit better with him in the building. So we thank God. We missed him on last, on last week. He was on assignment. So we thank God that he is back in the building with us. And um, I, I'm just so grateful um, for the word of the Lord. We come up, we have come off of a powerful two days of the Father Conference. I mean, a powerful two days. And the Lord met us and he met us real good. And I'm excited about what I sent, I'm sensing God is doing um, through that. And even as Apostle Vaughn was, was saying this morning, and I know a lot of us have worked and Thank you so much, Impact Church. You are a blessing. You are such a blessing. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you so much for how you have worked and labored with me over these last two days. And even as the pastor was talking about praise, um, Sister Happy, he was talking about that praise. I'm saying, you know what? I'm, trying, I'm getting to this body. Amen. <laughs> Maybe a little tired, but my, my spirit man was doing backflips. Was doing backflips. Amen. So we're just so grateful. We're so grateful for what the Lord is doing. Amen. They're going to get us situated here. Amen. Glory to God. So, amen. I mustered up. We mustered up a little strength. Amen. We good? All right. Mustered up some strength. I said, because God, I want to give you a good praise, a good, worthy praise. Amen. So God blessed us real good um, over these two days, and it was um, so phenomenal. So there's more to come from the Father Conference. So, um um, we thought maybe, you know, we were going to take a break this, this uh, Sunday and maybe let apostles stand in our stead. But a certain few po folk got in my ear. Ain't going to call their names out. Ain't going to put them on blast. Said, look, I sure hope, you know, you get some rest and bring that word Sunday because we, we're ready for part two or week two uh, of um, Now Faith Is. So we're going to jump right back into the teaching on this morning, and I know that it is going to be a blessing. And, and those of you who know me, like any good teacher, I'm going to review some things from last week. I'm like any good teacher, we're going to go through a review. So I want you to go back with me to 1 Corinthians 2, and we're going to take you through the word of the Lord. And I know that it is going to bless you. Um, faith is something about faith. There's something about it. We need, we cannot get enough teachings um, um, on the faith of God because faith is the currency in the kingdom of, of, of heaven. If you don't have faith, you are broke. It is actually impossible to please God. That's the only way we're going to be able to pull into our uh, physical realm or our natural realm the things that God has uh, stored up and laid up for us in the spirit realm. It's going to take faith for us to appropriate, for us to lay a hold, for us to take possession of those things. So without faith, you are broke in the kingdom. You're not going to be able to acquire anything um, out of God. Amen. He told the woman, Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood, it's your faith, it's your currency that pulled out of me what you desired from me. Amen. It is your faith that has received um, your healing and your breakthrough. So we're going to go through the word of the Lord real quickly today and uh, reviewing, and then we're going to give you what the Lord will have me to give you. So we're part two. So if you're taking notes, this is part two, week two, part two of the faith of God. What is it? We are still defining what faith is. The faith of God. What is it? Now faith is. What is faith? Okay. So 1 Corinthians 2, 4, Paul says to the Corinthians in verse 1, 
He says, when I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I did not use a lofty or arrogant words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3 says, when I came to you, I came to you in weakness. And in other words, I was timid. I was really afraid and I was trembling. Paul really being transparent here. Verse 4, he says, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. In other words, I'm not trying to impress nobody. I didn't come trying to prove nothing. But he says, but in demonstration of the spirit and power of God. And I love how the Amplified Version reads there. It says, and my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive words of wisdom, but they were in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power that was operating on, um, on me or operating in me and on me and through me. And it was stirring in your hearts and in your minds. Um, they were stirring up holy emotions and therefore persuading you. So in other words, Paul said, I didn't come with impressive, enticing words or lofty or arrogant words, but I came in demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit that was working on me and in me. And that as I was ministering, it was stirring up in your hearts and your minds a holy emotion that was persuading you and convincing you that the, of the truthfulness of God, of that the word of God is sure that you can take it to the bank. It is like a certified check. Come on. It's like a certified check. You can take it to the bank. Why? Because it is good. It is good. It's not a fake check, but it's a good check. <laughs> it's certified funds. <laughs> you can count on it. You can count on it. If God said it, you can, you can take it to the, the spiritual bank and you can cash that baby in because if God said it, he is also able to perform that thing that he has promised you. And herein is why we're not going to hold that thing with just one hand anymore. But we, the Bible says that we're going to grab a hold to the promises of God with both hands. And we're going to put our full weight on God. We're going to put our full confidence in God. Why? Because he said it. And if he said it, he's not man that he should lie. Amen. Hallelujah. So he goes on to say in verse 5, so that your faith or so that your pistis should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but that your faith would stand in the power of God. And the message version reads this way. Let's make this clear. Your life of faith is a response to God's power. An apostle has taught us for many years that the word of God, that faith is, a, is your life's response to what God has said is to God, his ways and his word. That when you have faith, that you respond to what God has said, you respond to his word, you respond to his will, and you respond to his way. Amen. But the message version said, let's make this clear. Your life of faith is a response to God's power. Not to some fancy, mental, or emotional footwork by preachers. But it is your life response to the power of God, to, to God's power. Amen? So we're going to make some things clear about faith, about what faith is. So we told you on last week, we, divide, we defined faith for you. And we told you that faith is, in the Greek, uh, the uh, word for faith is pistis. And it's a strong belief or strong conviction of the truthfulness of God, okay? Of the truthfulness of God. It's reliance upon Christ for deliverance, amen? It's reliance upon Christ for deliverance. I bind distractions now in the name of Jesus. Just let me do a little work, amen? I bind distractions now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Okay, we said that faith is pistis in the Greek, and it means a strong belief or a strong conviction of the truthfulness of God. It's reliance upon Christ, listen at this, for deliverance. So that when we have faith in God, we have a strong belief. We have a strong conviction 
of the truthfulness of God. The Bible says that they that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when we have faith in God, we have a strong belief. It's a conviction of the truthfulness of God. Therefore, that when I come to him, I'm coming to him knowing that he is true, knowing that it's a real fact that what he said, I can bank on it. I can stand on it. It's reliance. Listen at this. It's me relying on Jesus Christ for salvation and deliverance. And when I find myself into any, in, in any situation, I realize that I can rely on Christ to bring me out. I can rely on Christ to deliver me. I can rely on Christ, Pastor Tim, to heal me. I can rely, I can bank on him, glory to God, not leaving me in the condition that I'm in. So that's the type of faith that God says, I want to build in you. I want to cultivate in you. I want to develop in you that you, wherever you find yourself in life, you should, you should have the assurance. You should have the confidence that I'm not going to leave you there. That if you are there, it is for a reason. It is if I, if you are still in it, it's because I mean for you to get some things out of it. I want, don't panic. It's just a test. Don't don't panic, it's just a time of development. Don't panic, it's just me building capacity in you for where you're going. Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, don't throw in the towel right here. Don't faint right here because at a while, somebody say at a while, at a while, at a while, things are going to clear up and I am going to see the goodness of the Lord, not on the other side, but on this side. Not on the other side, but on this side. I'm going to see the hand of God. He's going to come in in a strong way. He's going to shut the mouth of the naysayers. He's going to shut the mouth of the critics. He's going to shut the mouth of the mockers. And God is going to come in on your behalf. I hear the Lord saying, I'm coming in and I'm coming in strong. I'm coming in and I'm coming in strong. I'm coming in and I'm coming in strong. I'm going to show up and show out on your behalf. I'm going to show up and I'm going to show out on your behalf. Hearing is why I need you to focus. I need you to get your faith back in its rightful place because I don't need you giving up here. I don't need you throwing in the towel. I don't need you moving into disbelief and, and doubt because God says, I am going to do this thing. So faith is a reliance that God, that Christ is going to deliver me. It's a reliance and trust in Christ for deliverance and salvation. So pistua, it means to believe. Okay, it means to have faith. So we're talking about faith and then we're talking about believe. Okay, we have pistis and then we have pistua. Okay, pistua to believe means to have faith in. It means to entrust one's spiritual well-being over to Christ. <laughs> this is so good. It's to put everything that I am. The Bible says that we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And the Bible says that we are not our own, that we've been bought with a price. And when we understand that, we can say, here, God, here's my life. Here's my heart. Here's all of me, God. I belong to you. I'm not my own. And I entrust my spiritual well-being. I entrust my wholeness into your hands. Do with me whatever you want to do with me. Come on. Oh, my God. You got to have faith to do that. Come on. You got to have faith to do that. Come here, Abram, because you don't know where God is walking you. You don't know where he's leading you. All you know is that he's calling you. He's summonsing you. He's put a clarion call out over your life. And he's saying, come unto me. Woo! All of you that are heavy and heavy laden, excuse me, and I will give you rest. He's calling you unto him. And here it is where the problem is we're coming to everything else but him. We're answering the call of everything else but Christ. And he said, I'm calling you to me. Why? Because I can keep you. Woo. I can keep you. I can regulate your mind. I can heal you. I can deliver you. I can save you. I can, woo, I can rectify everything that got broke in you in this thing called life. Here it is why I'm calling you to me. 
So when you get to a place, you just say, God, I trust you. I trust you with my spiritual well-being, with my emotional well-being, with my mental well-being, because I understand that you've not given me the spirit of fear, but you've given us love, power, and a sound mind, a mind that is disciplined, a mind that is regulated, a mind that is free from all of the things that, glory to God, that life brought. You delivered me and you unpacked these things through the process of time. You allowed me to unpack these things. So I trust you with all of me. So again, faith is a strong belief, a strong conviction of the truthfulness of God. I mean to drive this point home. I mean to be redundant because the Bible says that every man be a liar, but let God be true. And that you can trust me just like you are sitting in that chair. Just like you are sitting in that chair. I hear the Lord said, I need you to sit in me. I need you to sit in me. I need you to take a seat in me. The Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places far above all principalities, that we are seated in Christ. I hear the Lord say, remain seated. I don't care, come hell or high water, remain seated. Remain in your position regardless to your condition because your position, glory to God, is going to help you deli deliver you from that condition. See, so you focus on the condition, and God says, I just need you to get in position. You're focused on the condition of that thing. It looks bad. It looks bad. It sounds bad. But God says, if you remain seated in me, far above all principalities. Who, Jesus. And here it is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get us out of our seat, Elder. He wants to get us out of our position in Christ. He wants to get us out of our authority. He wants to move us out of our power. Because what is a believer without their authority and without their power? What is a believer without walking in your authority and your power? Which means that if anything come up on and want to jump on you, you said, you know what? I'm already equipped. Glory to God. I'm already equipped to deal with this thing. Because I've been given exousia, I've been given delegated authority in the name of Jesus, and I've been given power by the Holy Spirit. And at any moment, glory to God, if anything want to jump off. Hearing is why we shouldn't be scared believers. We, we shouldn't be coward, timid believers. Why? Because we have the authority of God. We have the power of God. Our testimony should be, I wish a devil would. I wish a devil would try to get into the lives of my children. I wish a devil would, glory to God, try to get in my business and my affairs. I wish a devil would try to step up in my marriage. I wish, I really wish a devil would try to infiltrate my church. I wish a devil would. Not on my watch, not on my watch, not on my watch. No, why? Because I know how to war. I know how to war. We don't get involved in flesh fights, but oh my God, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Listen to this, to the pulling down. Oh, devil, you coming down today. You coming down today, devil. You coming down today. You coming down up out of my thoughts. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You coming down today. You coming down where you belong. You belong up under my feet. Why you up in my ear? You ain't got no business in my ear. You, oh my God, you have been cursed to crawl on your belly and eat my dust. You have been cursed to crawl on your belly and eat my dust. Who, why you up in my ear? You too high if you up in my ear. You out of place, you out of order, you out of place, you out of order. So the truthfulness of who God is. So there's three main elements of faith. Write this in your notes. There's three main elements of faith. And the three main elements of faith, number one, is a solid conviction, which is a strong belief of the truthfulness of God. The second element of faith is a personal surrender to God. 
You can't say you have a strong belief or a strong conviction of the truthfulness of God and you have not given him a personal surrender of your life. And the third main element of faith is behavior or actions that are inspired by that surrender. Okay? So we have a solid conviction or strong belief of the truthfulness of God. Number two, we have a personal surrender to God. And then number three, a behavior or actions that are inspired by that surrender. In other words, fruit or actions that match that surrender. In other words, fruit that is meat or suitable for repentance. This is so good. So we say again that now faith is, it's a strong belief in the truthfulness of God, okay? We're defining faith. Numbers 23 and 19, again, if you were not here on last week, write this, um, write this verse in your notes. Numbers 23 and 19 says that God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind, <laughs> which means that if God said it, he has not changed his mind concerning you. If God says that he's going to do it, if God says that he's going to deliver, if God says that he's going to remove that thing, it, you can take it to the bank. It's a certified check. It goes on to say, has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not fulfill it? And Hebrews 6 and 18, write this in your notes. It says that by two un immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for God to lie. We have a strong consolation and lay hold of the hope that is set before us. In other words, we lay hold of or we grab the promises of God with both hands. I don't know about anybody else, but that just blesses me. Every time I hear that, uh, not just having a relaxed hold in your spirit, on the promises of God, but you grab that thing and you grip it. Because you said, God, you know how you know what you've been in a service and, and, and the word is coming forth or if, if a, a prophetic word is, is, is coming over somebody else's life and you, you realize I'll take some of that and you, mm, you know, you reach up, you know, he can be talking to the person over on the other side of the room and you say, mm, -mm I'm, I'm greedy. I'm greedy in the Holy Ghost. I'm greedy in God. You say, mm, I'll take some of that. And you know, you put, try to do it on the down low. You be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, I'll take some of that. And this is how you got to do. You got to grab a hold of the word of God. You got to grab a hold with both hands of the promises of God. If he said it, he is not man that he can lie. And that I can take that thing to the bank. Psalms 89, we're just reviewing, uh, 89, 34 through 35 says, God says, I will not break my covenant, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once it has gone out of my mouth concerning you, I will not alter it. Whoo, Pastor Jonah, he says, Apostle, he said, I will not alter it. I will not break my covenant. If it's gone out of my lips, you can bank on it. Verse 35 says, I have sworn by my holiness, which cannot be violated. I will not lie to David. Mm -hmm. I will not lie to Catherine. Can you put your name there? I will not lie. Hebrews 11 and 11, the Bible says that because of faith, listen at this, Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child when it was hopeless. I mean, it was long past, her, her age was long past childbearing stages. And that's just like the power of God and the power of God. I mean, that thing could be like Lazarus and it could have been dead for, I mean, a few days. It could have been dead for some years. It could have been dead for some months. But it's something about the resurrected power of Jesus Christ that when you believe in his resurrection power and you and he has said to you that this thing should not be dead. This thing, this thing, no, 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 no. I'm going to bring this thing back to life. Glory. This thing is not dead. It's just sleeping. Because you, I, I am building you 
up. I'm building your faith up that you would go in the might and power of who I called you to be. And there's going to come a day that you're going to open up your mouth and you're going to speak that thing. But the difference about it this time is that you're going to believe what you're speaking. You're going to speak that thing. You're going to prophesy that thing. You're going to call that thing forth and you're going to see it. Oh my God. Your eyes are going to behold in the natural realm what you speak with your mouth. And the difference is that you've removed all doubt. The difference is now that you are now banking in the truthfulness of who God is. And you understand that he cannot lie to you. That if he said it, he said, I'm going to do it. And this time I'm building up your faith so that when you speak it this time, You're not going to be speaking it with knees knocking. You're not going to be speaking trembling, but you're going to stand over that thing in the spirit and you're going to say, oh my God, you're going to do an Ezekiel 37 and you're going to tell it, hear ye the word of the Lord. I'm not coming with my complaining this morning. I'm not coming, glory to God, with my cursing and my murmuring, but I'm coming with the word of God. Here is the difference. Hear the word of the Lord. God said it can live. It can live if you speak to it. It will live if you open up your mouth that's full of faith. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, then you shall be saved. You will be delivered from that thing. But the thing about it is you got you to gotta allow it to move from just being lip service to it's now a heart's response. It's no longer just hit lip service, but it's now my heart responding in faith to what God has spoken to me. Woo, this is good to me. If it's not blessing anybody else, it's blessing me because I have some things on the table, y'all. I have some things on the table called life that I'm believing God for. And God says we are developing and cultivating your faith because you will see this thing. I told you on the onset, it's a setup. God said, I'm setting you up. I'm setting you up for greater, but I have to develop your faith. I have to sharpen you in your faith. I have to cultivate your faith that's in you for where I'm taking you. So Hebrews 11, 11 says that Sarah herself I had received physical power to conceive a child even when she was long past the age for it. Listen at this, because she considered God who had given her the promise to be reliable, trustworthy, and true to his word. She considered that thing. She sat down and she counted that, that thing. She said, you know what, this is God we talking about. This is not my pastor. This is not my prayer partner. This is not my mentor. This is not my therapist. Come on, and they have all given me good, powerful things. But this is the Lord that's speaking. And the Bible says that she considered who God was. She considered the one who was speaking to her. She considered the one who gave her the promise. And she realized that he's not a man that he should lie. If he promised my husband that there was going to be a seed that come forth out of my womb, then I'm just going to take this thing to the bank. The Bible says she considered the Lord. She considered who had said and had given her the promise. Listen at this. And she considered him to be reliable, trustworthy, and true to his word. Message Virgin says, by faith, barren Sarah. Barren Sarah. So he moved her from a place of barrenness to fruitfulness. And this is what faith will do to your life. It'll move you and move us from a place of barrenness to fruitfulness. And that thing that we once were identified with when we came to the faith clinic and we got our faith shots and our faith boosters and we got our faith together. Glory to God. It moves us from a place of barrenness to a place of fruitfulness. And oh my God. And the people that pass you this time, they be like, well, there's something different. There's something different. You you are no longer barren. Come on. You're no longer full of anxiety. You're no longer full of stress. You're no longer full of worryation. You're no longer full of depression. What happened? I got my faith right. And when I got my faith right, I was moved from a place of barrenness into a place of fruitfulness. And now I am bearing fruit and I am bringing forth and I am producing because my faith is intact. My faith is no longer misplaced, but my faith is in God. And if he said it, I'm banking on it. And if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down believing him. (laughs) 
Why? Because I serve the one that is the resurrective power. He's able to bring that thing back to life. Hallelujah. This is so good to me. Message version says, by faith, barren Sarah was able to become pregnant. Old woman as she was at the time. Because she believed the one who made the promise would do what he said. This is so powerful. When you believe the one who made the promise. Have you ever been in your time of praying? You just said, Lord, I believe, Lord, do what you said. Lord, do it for me. Lord, do what you said. Lord, I believe you can do it. I believe you're going to do it. She believed the one who made the promise would do what he said. So write this in your notes along with your notes on faith. Faith is our life's response in obedience to God, his word, and his ways. And this is a, the definition that Apostle Vaughn has given us for years, and I absolutely love this definition because many of us, we think that faith, faith is not just us believing hard enough to pull out of God what we desire. That's, it's, that's not just faith where faith is. It's not just, oh, God, if I believe, if I believe you hard enough, if I believe you long enough, I can pull out of you what I desire. But no, faith is your life's response in obedience to what God has said. If he said that you are blessed, then your life response, you should just respond to what he said and just carry yourself like the blessed person that you are. If he said that you are the head and not the tail, then why are you walking around as if you have no hope? Then you are to put on your clothes and shake yourself and to carry yourself, your life, everything about you is now responding to what God has said concerning you. That's the ultimate of faith is when I respond to his word in obedience. When I respond to his ways in obedience. When I respond to his will in obedience. Hallelujah. So it's not just believing hard enough to pull out of God what you want. There's more to faith than just that. Look at somebody and tell them there's more to faith than just that. <laughs> the Bible says that the just, listen at this, shall live by faith, shall walk by faith, shall respond by faith. To what God has said. That's Romans 1 and 17. So to live by faith means, listen at this, means to make a conscious choice to follow God. It means to make a decision. When we live by faith, we wake up every day to make a conscious choice that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will. I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. It's making a conscious choice that regardless to what this day holds, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to approach this day with gladness. I'm going to celebrate God. Why? Because this is how we live by faith. This is how we walk by faith. We're not just coming in here on Sunday, sitting up under the word and just getting, you know, charged superficially, but we are getting charged with the word of God and we are being infused with faith. A faith is being imparted into our hearts so that when we leave this place, come Monday, come Monday, we can make a conscious choice and a conscious decision that I am going to walk by faith. I'm going to go into the job. I'm going to be full of joy. I'm going to be full of light. The people are going to know that I serve God. They don't have to wonder, but I am going to walk in the power and love of God. This is what it looks like when it says walk it out. I'm going to walk out the word that I heard on Sunday. I'm going to walk out the word that I studied throughout the week. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to be like Paul says, I'm going to be a living epistle. Even if people who don't know God, who've never picked up their word, they ought to be able to know what the word really means by reading my life, by reading my life. Why? Because I'm a living epistle. I'm a living letter of what God said in his word. Hearing is why the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's present. It's before you. You're looking at it. Glory to God. The kingdom of heaven is at hand through the believer. Through the believer. Which means that God has access to every space that you feel. 
God has access to do what he needs to do. He can heal. He can deliver. He can encourage. He can comfort. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand through the believer. Ah, oh, Jesus. This is some good word. I mean, this is good. You ought to praise God like it's really good. This is good word. It means to make, so to live by faith means to make a conscious choice to follow God, to follow his word, and to follow his ways. Hallelujah. Romans 1.17 reads, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Which means if you don't have faith, you don't have life. Oh, my God. It is through faith that a righteous person has life. So true faith, put this in your notes, true faith will provoke a response from you. Turn to James 2.14. True faith. So if, they're true, if there's true faith, there must mean that there is a false faith, faith or a fake faith. But true faith will cause you, will provoke you to move will provoke your life to respond to God in obedience. James 2.14, the New Living Translation version says, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Message version says, Dear friends, do you think you'll get anywhere in this if you learn all the right words but never do anything? Does merely talking about faith indicate that a person has it? <laughs> Does merely talking about faith and talking, walking around talking about you're blessed and highly favored and you believe God, does merely talking about faith, is that an indication that a person really has faith? No. Verse 15 says, suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing. 16 New Living Translation says, and you say, goodbye, have a good day, stay warm, eat well, and then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? If you run into people and you're not able to provide their most basic needs and you have in your ability to give them what they need, the Bible says, what good is it to say to them, goodbye, have a good day, stay warm, I hope you make it out there, and you don't give the, that person what they need? What good does that do? 17 in Amplified goes on to say, so also faith, if it does not have works, deeds, or actions of obedience, listen at this, to back it up. God says, if you believe me, then back it up. Back it up with your actions. I want to see you. If you believe, glory to God, in tithing, then back it up by tithing. If you believe, glory to God, in loving your enemies, then back it up by loving them and praying for them instead of doing, amen, a tick for attack. <laughs> I hear the Lord saying, back it up, back it up. I, I need y'all to help me preach this morning. Look at somebody and tell them, back it up, back it up. If you believe God, back it up. God says, where are the backup believers? Where are the back it up believers? Where are the back it up believers? I didn't say, well said, thy good and faithful servant. I said, well done. Well done. Where are the believers who are doing the word of God? Not just talking about the word of God. Not just singing about the word of God. But doing the word of God. God said, back it up then. Amplify says, so also faith, if it does not have works by itself, is destitute of power. It's inoperative. It's dead. Faith without actions, faith without a backup, a backing it up, is dead. So God says, herein, you believe that I have favor over your life, then why aren't you out there looking for it? Woo! And when I mean looking for it, it means that you are out as you go. You are, you're going out in expectation. That favor is going to find you. That favor is going to overtake you. Because favor is looking for you, but are you looking for it? And your expectation says, I'm going to show up in the day looking for what's looking for me. At 
the open of every door, at the, at the sound of every phone call, this could be my favor. This could be what is looking for me. And me looking for it is me being in a posture of expectation. Me putting on my clothes, combing my hair, going out, moving, being about my father's business, Glorifying his name, realizing that what is looking, what I am looking for is also looking for me. What I am expecting, let me say that. What I am expecting God to do is looking for me. Listen to this. And it's my expectation that's willing that thing in. It's my faith that's pulling out of the environment, everything that I need. I, I'm showing up in this day and I realize that the Lord is going to provide for me. He's going to be my very present help in the time of trouble and in the time of need. And what I'm doing is pulling these things in with my faith, with my expectation, with my praise, with my heart of gratitude. God, I am thanking you in advance for what I know you're going to do for me in this day. I am praising you in advance. For what I already know is mine. Why? Because I believe in the truthfulness of what you said. If you said the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want, then I'm going to go throughout this day knowing that my needs are already met. Knowing that you're going to lead me beside the still water. Knowing that you're going to make me to lie down in green pastures. Knowing that you are going to restore my soul. Why? Because I believe you. Somebody shout, I believe you, God. I believe you. And I'm getting ready to get a back it up attitude. I'm getting ready to get a back it up attitude. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the glory of God. I'm going to show up. And when I show up, I'm going to show up in power and faith. Hallelujah. 17 in the message version reads, isn't it obvious that God talk without God acts is outrageous nonsense? Isn't it obvious that God talk without God actions or acts is an outrageous nonsense? So it's outrageous nonsense. Somebody says, come on, so that means that I needed to repeat that. <laughs> that come on means say that again. It's outrageous to believe, to sit around and have all this talk, and we don't have no back it up. God said, you talk good, but, but when you leave service, upon the glory of God. Come on there, what we said, well, you don't even realize that the glory is in you. You don't even realize that you are, it can be a move on two feet at any moment, that the glory and the power of God is in you. And God says, I'm waiting to be a move on your job. I'm waiting to be a move in your home. But you got to get up. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to back up what I say by what I do. And you're going to be able to see my faith. Not by what I'm saying, but by what I'm doing. Oh, my God. Who tap somebody and say, show me, show me. I want to see. I want to see. Show me. Do you really believe? Show me. I want to see. I'm being nosy. I want to see. I want to see if you really believe. I want to see if you really believe. I want to see if you're going to keep going when all hell breaks loose. I want to really see when, it, when you don't have no support, when you can't find no support. I want to see if you still believe God. Come on, come on. There was many times I could have threw in the towel, Sister Doretha, concerning this conference, but the Lord said, keep going. I'm with you. I want to really see if you believe that I gave you this vision and the, oh my God, and he poured out his spirit over these two days because I kept going when I didn't even see what I needed. But I heard what he said, and what he said kept me going. What he said kept me believing. What he said kept me going to my prayer closet, saying, God, you're going to do this thing. Touch the heart of kings. Touch the heart of kings. Touch the heart of people. And God did an E360, an E360. What is an E360? In Ephesians 3.20, excuse me, an E320. He did it in my life. Why? Because I dared to believe him. I backed it up by moving. 
I backed it up by going. Listen to this. Even when I didn't feel like going, when I didn't feel like doing, I still showed up. Can I say to you, the people that you admire, you don't know what they have to go through just to show up to give you what they have to give you from God. You don't know what people have to go through just to show up, but it's the faith of God, it's the grace of God that keeps people moving even when they want to sit down, when they want to give up, when they want to lay down, they don't want to show up another day. Faith says, oh yes you are. Glory to God. Obedience says, oh yes you are, because your life responds to how God said it and it responds to faith, not by how you feel. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I didn't say that thing how I felt it, but let me say it again. Your life responds to God's faith, the faith of God, not by how you feel. Have you ever just said, I don't feel like this? I don't feel like loving them. If I could do how I feel, I would turn that place out. But I am going to walk by faith, not by how I feel. Oh, Jesus. Not by what I see, but I'm going to keep walking by what he said because what I see don't line up with what he said. But I believe that if I just keep right on walking, if I just keep right on walking, that thing is going to clear up after a while and I'm going to see what he said if I keep right on walking by what he said. Not by what I feel, not by what I think, not by my opinions, but what he said. And out a while, I'm going to just put, faith will cause you to act. Woo, I feel Jesus right now. Faith will cause you to bust a move. Come on. Faith will cause you to bust a move. Faith says, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Faith says, I'm getting ready to get out of here, get out of where. I'm getting ready to get out of poverty. I'm getting ready to get out of lack. I'm getting ready to get out of disappointment. I'm getting ready to get out of shame. Faith says, it's time to bust a move. I'm getting ready to get up out of here. I'm getting ready to get up out of the place of load up our. I'm getting ready to get up out of the place of defeat. Faith says, why sit ye here till I die? Why sit ye here till I die? If I sit here, I may die. Come on. The four leopards, come on. And if I go into the camp, there is a strong possibility that I may be killed. But guess what? If I die, I'm going to die moving. I'm going to die moving. If they're going to kill me, they're going to they gonna have to hit me while I'm moving. But they're sure not going to hit me while I'm sitting. They're going to hit me while I'm moving. And the Bible says that when they moved in the twilight, God moved in the twilight. When they moved, God moved just like that. God says, you waiting on me to move. God says, I'm waiting on you to move. I'm waiting on you to get sick and tired of being sick and tired of being broke. What are you going to do about your situation? What are you going to do about your marriage? What are you going to do about your children? I am waiting on you. You're not waiting on me. God says, if you will, I will. If you do, I will. So they considered and they thought within themselves. Why sit ye here in this until we die? And the Bible says that they got up and they moved in the twilight. And when they moved in the twilight, God moved on their behalf. Oh, my God, this is so good. High five somebody and tell them if you have five and folk, just look at them. I know we don't want to be touching folk with all this monkey pox and COVID and all this stuff that's going on. Look at somebody and say, it's time to bust to move. It's time to bust to move. It's time to stop complaining. It's time to stop murmuring. But it's time to bust to move. And if faith will cause you to move, it will cause you to act upon the word of God. It's time to get up out of here. I'm getting up out of offense. I'm getting up out of religion. I'm getting up out of bondage. I'm getting up out of this bad decision. I'm getting up out of this bad relationship. Why sit ye here till I die? This is not how my story ends. My story does not end in poverty. My story does not end in debt. My story does not end in offense. My story does not end in bondage. 
And I'm getting ready to get my faith right like the woman with the issue of blood. And I'm getting ready to pull out of Jesus what belongs to me. I have somebody say it's time to bust a move. It's time to get up out of here. Out of what? Come on. Out of whatever you find yourself sitting in. Crying about, complaining about, murmuring about. Glory to God, having a pity party about. The Lord said, fold up that pity party and get, oh my God, and have you a praise party. Fold up that pity party. Oh my God. And dismiss everybody in your life that tries to keep you in that place of pity. Dismiss everybody. Tell them you can be dismissed. Send them a memo. You can be dismissed. And you can be dismissed. And you can be dismissed. Because you keep me in the place. Where God is trying to deliver me from. You keep me in the place of pity. You keep me in my past. And God wants to deliver me from my past. You keep reminding me of what they did. You are dismissed. You are dismissed. God says, fold up that pity party. God says, because I already know what I'm wanting to do in your life. I already know. It's low. Faith says after today I'm moving. Faith says after today I'm moving. I'm moving in obedience. Come on. I'm responding to what God has already said. God says how many more times do I have to tell you what I've told you? How many more times? How many more prophets will it take? How many more words will it take for you to move in obedience? How many more sermons? How many more amen times with me in the morning? How I said what I said and I meant what I said. Why aren't you moving? And you're in a dead situation because you won't move. It's because you are fearful. You want to allow the love of God to cast out the fear in your heart. And the Bible says that as the lepers went, they were healed. As they went, as they went, they got a word from the Lord. And as they went, they saw what God said. God said, you won't see what I said until you go. You won't see what I said until you go. Your situation is like it is. It's because you won't move. You won't respond in obedience. You're allowing fear to cripple you. You're allowing fear to cripple you. You're allowing fear to cripple you. To cause you to miss out. The life that I called you to live. The life that I called you to feast off of you. You're stuck because of you not because of my power it's because of your unbelief and I know you don't believe because you're not moving I know you I know you don't believe what I said because you're not moving because faith says I'm getting ready to act getting ready to bust a move I'm getting ready to get out of this and your families are being held back Mm, your families are being held back Mm, your businesses are being held back. Why? Because you are in disobedience. Let's call it what it is. It's disobedience. You're not responding to what I said. And you're panicking. And God says, don't panic. It's just a test. Who by shay? Don't panic. It's just a test. I want to read this in your hearing. Everybody standing to your feet. Keep it right there. God gave me this to give you this morning. John 6. And this is for somebody. God says, don't panic. It's just a test. John 6, 5 through 13. When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said to Philip, where can we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove or to test him. Listen at this, what verse 6 says, John 6 and 6. For he himself knew what he would do. God, Jesus already knew what he was going to do. 
But he asked Philip this question, testing him to prove him. In other words, don't panic. It's just a test, beloved, because God already knows what he's going to do concerning you. Verse 7 says, Philip answered him, said, 200, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. Verse 8, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, there is a lad here that has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sit down, and the number was about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, listen, when he had given thanks, he distributed the disciples and the, to the disciples and the disciples to them that were sitting down. And likewise of the fish as much as they could. Verse 12 says, And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain. E320. That nothing be lost. And the last verse, Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. God says, what are you waiting on? God says, what are you waiting on? This is a Selah moment. Just, just pause and just, just worship the Lord. God says, I need you to hear God. God says, what are you waiting on? I'm waiting on you to Even if you have to move with a knocking in your knees. Even if you have to move with your, with your palms sweaty. God says, because as you go, things are going to clear up. The knock in your knees will cease. The sweat in your palms will draw up, will dry up. God says, I need you to hear me this morning and I need you to move on what I've already said to you I need you to move let the Holy Spirit guide you into your destiny into your legacy let the Holy Spirit guide you, lead you into faith, out of frustration, into your place of faith. You're frustrated because you're not moving in faith. You're irritated and you're agitated. Everything around you is a source of irritation. It's like a thorn in your flesh. It's because you will not move. And God says, as you go, as you begin to move by faith, everything that you need will be on that path. Everything that you need. You're going to walk right into it when you walk by faith. Okay, I'm on court. That's it. Worship the Lord. That's it. Worship the Lord. You're hearing God, aren't you, son? You're hearing God. Amen. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Come, I need to lay my hands on you in this moment. Oh, I need to lay my hands on you in this moment. It's all over you, son. It's all over you. Come here, Angie. Stand with the man of God. It's all over you. It's all over you. It's all over you, son. The wealth of God, the prosperity of God. And God says there's some dealings in your soul. 
There's some soul dealings. And God says that me and the Holy Spirit are getting ready to come for. This is a season of unpacking some things in your soul, son. Because it's, it's, it's keeping you in a place of not moving forward. And God says, everything that I have shown you is yours. And I close the door to your past today. Yeah, I close the door to your past. I shut the door to it in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And I decree and declare that it will no longer keep showing up in your present. And it will not threaten your future. God says everything that I have shown you belongs to you. And I pray fire under your feet fire under your feet fire Woo, my shit. yeah yeah my fire under your feet son in the name of she and i hear the lord saying i got you i got you i got your family i got you i got you because Woo, god said there's some things that i need to prove to a few folk through you god says i'm gonna use you but there's some people that i that i have to uh, woo, prove some stuff too fire under your feet a burning desire in your heart I see you getting up early in the morning man of God I see you getting up early in the morning son and I see you writing God says we're getting ready to revisit the, the vision God says, and I, we're getting ready to rewrite some things. Because what you have written is too small, saith the Lord. It's too small. That's Tim. But I hear the Lord saying, I'm getting ready to give you me, son. I'm getting ready to give you me. And I'm going to restore the years. Woo! I'm going to restore the years. Restoration hits your life. Mm. Restoration hits your life, man to God. In the name of Jesus, there's so much more I can say, but we'll say later. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Come on, you ought to bless God. Come on, you ought to bless God. Jesus, God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Lift those hands high, Levet. Lift them high. Apostle, can you get, just go and lay hands on her? There's a divine impartation even now, woman of God. I hear the Lord saying, move, 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 move. Leave and move. I hear for you, Navet. Leave and move. Leave and move. Leave. Leave. Leave those things behind and move. Move into your place of destiny. Move into your place purpose. Move into the reason that I placed you here. Move, move. And I snatch off of you the fear of man. I snatch off of you the fear of man. I snatch off of you the fear of man in the name of Jesus. Fearing man and their thoughts and their opinions. I snatch it off of you now in the name of Jesus. Leave and move. Says, I already know what I am going to do. I already had the lad in place. I already had the lad in place. I just needed you to go out and locate what I already have in place. Ma, I just need you to go out. That was the test, Sister Happy. That was the test. He tested Philip when he asked him because the Bible says he already knew what he would do. 
says, my command for my people is go out and locate what I already have in place for you. In other words, move. Move. Walk by faith. Respond to what I said by obedience. Move into what I have called you to move into. Father, we love you in this place. Come on, lift those hands all over this building. Father, we love you in this place. Give us the courage to move. Help us to walk with the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Help us to get behind him and allow him to lead and guide us into all truth and righteousness concerning us in our lives. We won't go ahead of him. But help us to get in the Holy Spirit and help us, Father, even as we're in our own private personal time with you help us to sit in the Holy Spirit I hear the Lord saying sit in the Holy Spirit herein is why you go into the presence of the Lord with journals and, and, and pen and paper because you're going to need to write down what you hear and God says I'm getting ready to give my people instructions through the Holy Spirit about your next move not about what I've already said but about your next move your next move of faith God says you're going to find every single thing that you need as you go you're going to be made whole as you go the Bible says as they went they were healed and one came back turned back and told Jesus thank you. Father help us to line up with your will. Help us to follow the leader. Help us to follow the leader. The Holy Spirit has the blueprints of your life. The Holy Spirit has the blueprints for your life. Follow him saith the Lord. Move in him. Father, we receive your courage now. I hear the Lord saying, be thou strong and very courageous. Father, we receive your courage now to move in you. We decree and declare that in you we live, move, and have our being. For we are your children. And we decree it and declare it even now. That we get ready to get up out of here. We get ready to get up out of this place has not been predestined for us in Jesus name is our prayer give God some praise all over this building come on give him a radical praise come on give him a radical praise all over this building give him a radical praise a radical praise a radical praise hallelujah hallelujah that's it there you my soko robo koshe Hey, a radical praise. God, we thank you this morning. Hey, God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for courage. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. We thank you for faith. We thank you for our faith, God. We thank you for the promises of God. Our yes and amen. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. 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 Hallelujah. We thank you. We glorify your name. We magnify your name, oh God. We we lift you high in this place. We lift you high in this place. Hey, Yaman so we lift you high in this place, oh God. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. That's it. Praise him. My God. Look at somebody tell him it's time to make that move. We're moving in faith. Come on, we're not just talking, but we're literally responding to God and his word. 
Scripture says that he called Israel out of bondage unto a place. And their faith says, listen, we got to respond to God by doing what the word and what the command and what the vision is commanding for us to do. But I don't know about you, but it's time to bust a move. I love that part when she was teaching. It says that when they moved in the twilight, God moved in the twilight. Woo, Jesus, that, that did something for me. I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready to bust a move in the twilight. Hallelujah. I think I, I forget who it was, and I know y'all don't know who it was because y'all been saved all your life, but somebody penned a song out there in that secular world and said, when you move, I'm going to move just like that. Yeah, I know y'all don't know somebody. Yeah, yeah, but I heard it somewhere. I can't tell you where I heard it. <laughs> Ludacris. Luda said, when I move, you move just like that. Well, listen, let's just go ahead and sanctify that, that statement. God says, when, when you move by faith, according to my word, I'm going to move with you just like that. You ought to clap your hands right there. Somebody been listening to Luda, Chris. <laughs> Luda! We say Jesus is Lord. We're so honored. Can we clap our hands for Apostle Catherine? What an amazing word now faith is now faith is listen you can have your seats in the presence of the lord i believe that god has broken some stuff up and i think there's one thing that is uh, important for us to understand the bible says that when jesus comes he is coming and he said will i find faith will i find faith in the earth will i find a people who are able to to respond and move with me and obey me because it is in obedience that we find that we can trust God. It is in obedience we can find that we can trust God. And sometimes obedience, listen, it's not always pretty. And it don't always feel good. Sometimes walking by faith, oh, can we tell the truth? It hurts. It's like, ouch, this hurts God. But I trust you every step of the way. And I thank God that even as he told Abram, he said, go and I'm going to show you as you go. I'm going to show you a place, show you a city, show you a place. Listen, he'd never been that way before and he had to trust God. And so I'm telling you, it don't always feel good. Sometimes you have to take those steps of faith and say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move and I'm going to trust you according to your word. But that's when we learn that we can trust him. So we thank God. And I'm telling you, God is not teaching you and he's not restoring and he's not replenishing and he's not literally resuscitating your faith for nothing. I believe that God is getting ready to move you into something great. I believe that God is getting ready to move us into something even greater. Somebody say greater. I believe that without doubt. And so we receive the word of the Lord and we again praise God for the woman of God who preached and uh, taught. I believe God is setting us up for something great. Listen, it's time for us to walk in faith even in our giving. The Bible says that even as we give and as we uh, bring our tithe unto the Lord, that God will open the window of heaven and he will pour us out blessings that we will not have room enough to receive. And I believe that is a faith and demands a faith response. Scripture says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. I want to call your attention uh, th just for a moment to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And let's just do a different one. Let's do this one. There it is. That's the one I was looking. Praise our God. It says in, in uh, Corinthians 9, I think it is 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. I got this technology that is slow. Oh, yes, it is slow. It is slow. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. Glory to God. That means I need to update. You know, sometimes when stuff starts getting slow, uh, they be telling you update. And they so clever, aren't they? They say, listen, we're going to get you to buy a phone because we ain't going to speed yours up anymore. And I'm like one of those ones, as long as it'll ring, re, uh, ring. Yeah, I got it. As long as it'll ring, I can hear it ring and I can see. I'm going to hold on to that baby. You know, folk be talking about they got a, a, the latest I what? I don't even know what the latest is. What is the latest? 13. Woo. Yeah, I'm a little bit behind the times. Glory to God. People are like, I got an iPhone 13. I said, I just got a phone. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the Bible says, Every man according as he has purposed in his heart. I believe that every time we come into the house of God, we should have purposed in our heart uh, to bring an offering and a gift. It says, So let him give, and not to do it grudgingly of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Scripture says, Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. I believe that every time we come into the house of God, we should have already predetermined, predestined in our own mind and heart what we're going to give to God. And I believe that as he prospers us and as he blesses us, that should be the tithe that God, I'm going to tithe and I'm going to give you my tithe and I'm going to also bring you a free will offering and I'm going to actually do it, but I'm not going to do it grudgingly. I'm not going to do it grudgingly. I'm not going to do it even of necessity, but I'm going to do it even by faith, and I'm going to do it in goodwill. And the Bible says that God loves that. God loves how you give, and when you give cheerfully, hilariously, one particular version says it. In the message it reads, I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your mind what you will give that will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting God loves it when the giver delights in giving. So this morning, I want you to bring and I want you to prepare your tithe and your offering and I want you to give today cheerfully, meaning uh, with thought and with purpose. Isn't that amazing? That should change how we uh, even see and approach offering. It shouldn't be like, oh man, it's offering time. What should I give? We had already thought it out. Most of you already done wrote them big checks. Glory to God. You've already got your checks written out. You done basically put all those zeros back there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on that day, man. I'm waiting on that day where I can just say here, here is uh, $60,000 right here. And then go back home and not have to worry about what's been to happen. I believe that God is doing that for us. And so we praise God for your, your faithfulness and giving. And he says he loves a cheerful, a hilarious, someone who gives and they enjoy doing it. They enjoy being a blessing to God. And I know that God will bless you. And the scripture teach us that he will open the windows for the tithers. He will literally open up the windows of heaven and he will pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. So today as you prepare your hearts and minds to give, we want you to be a blessing. We also want to remind you that we are preparing for our 1k Sunday service and I want you to believe God listen don't let the 1k don't let don't let the sound of a thousand dollars cause you to be like oh God who in the world can do that and don't all of a sudden get an invitation somewhere else on that Sunday praise God sometimes I'm telling you it's like I ain't going to church that Sunday they taking up asking people to bring up what's wrong with them we believe God I believe that God will bless his people so that we can and you can do it not I'm talking about not robbing Peter to pay Paul type God will literally give seeds to sowers but you have to become a sower to get that seed so we encourage you to also be prayerful and be mindful that we are in the pro uh, middle of a project that we're uh, doing downtown and we're believing God to continue to move forward to put our new roof on the building so that then as we put that new roof on that's when we going inside and we're getting ready to outfit uh, I'm talking about God's house come on somebody say God has a house and we're going to see God do some miraculous things. So we want to remind you that we are still believing God uh, for that. And we're believing God for a powerful 1,000 uh, 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 seed service on that Sunday in September. And we're believing God is going to literally, I think it's the first Sunday in September. No, not the first Sunday. Uh, the second Sunday. Yes, in September. And so we certainly want you guys to position yourselves and believe God with us because God is able. Somebody say it. God is able. All right, we want you to stand to your feet. We have multiple ways that we give here. You, are, of course, here you can give in person, but even if you are here in person, you can give by way of Cash App. I was talking to the apostle. Apostle John was telling me about his sons uh, and his children. He's like his children, and he he's up on technology, and we were just fellowshipping and talking, and he was saying, man, my children uh, have really taught me about technology. And he said, and I didn't know there were so many ways to exchange money. 
he said they have literally on his phones, all of his devices, his children now have downloaded Zeal, downloaded Cash App. He said they downloaded every other opportunity and option to give so that when they call me, it's like, no, daddy, you got to go over here to your phone. And it's like, they, you know, it's like, wow. I say that to say this technology is amazing amazing there's so many ways to give but you can give in person that means you can bring a check cash you can also give online you can text to give and you can cash out and for those of you who are watching by way of our Facebook live we thank you for participating as well I do want to say this you may not be able to be in that 1k service but I promise you every one of those thousand every one of those uh, uh, dollars that make up that thousand dollars can be here for you glory to God how many of you know you don't always have to be here but your money can Y'all ain't going to say amen. Your money can be, and te I'm telling you, I'm telling you, sometimes you ever have people who say, I can't come, but I'm going to send you something. And you, you, you feel like they are really there. It's like, it was so good that you came. It's like, I won't do it. That's right, your seed was. But we th thank God for every seed sower. And those of you who are watching by way of Facebook Live, you too can be a participant in our giving. So we ask that you would uh, choose one of those many ways to give. Father, we thank you for every seed sower. We thank you for the tither. We believe and believe yet still that you are blessing the tithers. You're blessing the givers. You're rebuking the devourer for our sake. And you're causing all men to know that we are your children. We are your your sons and daughters and you're providing for us and we just thank you now for the blessing that you're bestowing upon the givers in the name of Jesus bless those who give make it God uh, run over into their lives so that they too will be a blessing to others even as men and women give unto their bosom in Jesus name we pray let the church say amen at this time we're going to ask that if you do have a seed that you like to sow and bring in an orderly way you can bring it to the altar that's it come from where you are and bring your seed bring it bring it remember the Lord loves a cheerful giver the Lord loves a cheerful giver that's it bring your seed just remember don't bump into nobody going back glory to God it reminds me when we were in Cameroon last year the gentleman I asked him about the rules to the road you know I said, how do y'all drive without stop signs and stop lights? And, and I said, you know, what are the rules to the road? And sometimes that's how it is doing the offering when we just ask you to come. He said, the only rule is don't run into nobody. I was like, oh, okay. Can you imagine that in America? No stop lights, no stop signs. Everybody's just going, coming and going, coming and going. And the only rule is don't hit nobody. Don't hit nobody and don't get hit. That's what he said. Don't hit nobody and don't get hit. It's like, what? I'm telling you, and I promise you, some of y'all will be at home over there in Africa the way y'all drive. Because y'all drive like there are no rules on the road. Glory to God. Just go. We love God. We praise God. Thank you for your liberal giving. Thank you for your support. We do, again, want to remind you that we have several things that's going on. We certainly want to encourage you to continue to help us support, push, and participate in our youth and teen ministry. One of the things that I believe that God is uh, doing is that he's continuing to build ministry so that we can pass it on to the generations to come. And we thank God for Brother Marcus and Sister Charm who are doing an amazing job working with our young people. And they have some amazing things that's going on. I think they have a community event that's going on that we want to basically uh, not only introduce and remind you of, but introduce to some of you uh, what's going on with the youth. And so they are doing some amazing things in the community with our children. They're also teaching our children to pray, and they're teaching our children literally to uh, really uh, learn how to worship God, even in their own worship service and experience. Uh, so if you have youth and teens, we encourage you, bring your teens and your youth to church and allow them to participate. Uh, in the youth and teen church and then allow them to also connect as they are doing a community day that will be uh, coming up and they'll have a flyer and they'll have something out I don't know the exact day and time of that community day but we want to get all of our youth and teens in uh, if you will a, a mindset of serving others serving others serving others I believe one of the things that we see in the church uh, when servitude falls off is because sometimes there are generational gaps where we haven't really taught and haven't really uh, helped people understand. It's a blessing in serving the house of God. 
It's a blessing in serving in the house of God. And so it's a blessing when we serve others. So please, please, for those of you who are not on social media, we have members. Everybody, can you believe it now? I know some of you may say, no, everybody's on social media. Everybody's not on social media. Some people do not have uh, Facebook. Some people don't. I don't have, the only thing I do have is Facebook. I, I realize there's so much stuff. People say, are you are you IG? And I'm like, what? what's that? Uh, what is it, IG? I was like, what's I? And, and, and they were asking me, Apostle was asking me, he said, are you on um, Clubhouse? I said, nah, I quit the club a long time ago. I didn't know what that stuff was. And he was like, you need to get on Clubhouse? You on Instagram? I was like, no, not on Instagram. I said, I'm just on Facebook. So whatever the case may be, we have members who may not be on Facebook. So we do want you guys to uh, at least check the website as well as as we move forward we're going to continue to do a better job of informing you of what's informing you of what's going on around the church because we realize everybody is not on Facebook and everybody's not on Instagram and everybody does not even some cases check the website uh, etc but please please let's find ways to stay connected so we can find out all the wonderful things that's going on and we can continue to support that all right all right, because we know that everybody has cooked today and all these sisters have made these big meals. We got pot roast going. We got cornbread probably getting ready to be fried. Glory to God, collard greens with ham in it. Glory, hallelujah. If you don't like ham, season it with turkey. Uh, whatever you have cooked, praise God. We're going to let you go and get to it. So stand to your feet all over the building. Somebody said, you need to stop. You know we don't cook no more. Some of y'all already done checked out the restaurant. How many, how many seats y'all got? You got seats held for you. Glory to God. Y'all remember those days back in the days when after church was over? It's like, who house you going over? And then there were some of us who was a little greedy. We go over two, three houses. Like, I'm going to go over mother so-and-so house, and then I'm going to go over sister so-and-so house. Lord, bring back the church of old telling you, bring back the church of old, but we thank you for your patience. We thank you for your attentiveness. Thank you for your, your, your time. All of our visitors, we appreciate you worshiping with us. We do not take for granted you being here, and more than anything, we certainly praise God for Apostle Catherine for a powerful, inspiring word on faith. With nothing else, we're going to apostolically release you from this worship experience that you may go and make a difference everywhere you go. Our vision here at Impact Church is to build a people to impact cities, nations, etc. And I believe that even as you were impacted, as you were inspired, it is my prayer that you would go and inspire others everywhere you go. Make a difference everywhere you go. And remember to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let the world know that Jesus saves, that Jesus is still a healer, and that he is still a deliverer. In Jesus' name, be dismissed is our prayer. We love you and may God keep you until we meet here again next week. God God bless you is our prayer. Hug somebody, love somebody. If they're hugging, hug them. If they're just speaking, speak. Whatever the case may be, we encourage you to fellowship with someone before you leave.